<laughs> All right, good morning, folks. We've got just one more minute here, and then we'll turn it over to Vice Chair Wiedemann to start us off on the meeting here. And it looks like we've just rolled over to 9 o'clock, so uh, go ahead and take us away, Diana. Okay, okay. good morning, everybody. Um, first item on the agenda is call we, uh, have a roll call, please, and call the meeting to order. Commissioner Wiedemann? Here. Here. Commissioner Fallen? Here. Commissioner Jones? Sorry, here. Com Commissioner Morris? Chair Purnell. We do have a quorum with absences prearranged by Commissioner Morris and Commissioner, Commissioner Purnell. All right, All right thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. Effective March 27, 2020. The Mendocino County Planning Commission meetings will be conducted virtually and not available for in-person public participation. Pursuant to State Executive Order N2920, meetings are live stream and available for viewing on the Mendocino County YouTube page at www.youtube.com Mendocino County video. In order to minimize the risk of exposure during this time of emergency, the public may participate digitally in meetings by sending comments to the PBS commissions at mendocinocounty.org in lieu of personal attendance. All public comments will be made immediately available to the commissioner, staff, and the general public as they are received and processed by staff and can be viewed as an attachment to this meeting agenda at the Planning Commission agenda page. Requests for telecomment are required to be submitted prior to 7 a.m. the morning of the meeting. If you requested to speak under public expression, please call in now. Um, uh, we've already uh, conducted roll call, so now we're gonna go to, uh, do we have a determination of legal status? Yeah, legal notice has been determined by the proof of pubs on file in each of the files. All right, and uh, can we have the director's report if there is one? Good morning, Chair, members of the Commission. Thank you very much. Nash Gonzalez, PBS Director. Um, not much to add today other than the department is busy doing recruitments. Uh, we have recruitments out for staff assistant, planners one, twos, and threes, uh, chief planner, Building Inspector 1 and a Code Enforcement Officer 1. And so we are uh, in the midst of recruitments now based on our approved budget. So more to come, but um, that's basically it for today. Really short director's report, but I'd be happy to answer any questions for the commission. Do we have any uh, questions for the director? Commissioner Jones? Yeah, thanks. I was wondering um, if you wouldn't mind giving just a brief update on what happened with the cannabis cultivation ordinance as it wended its way through the Board of Supervisors. And I'm particularly interested in knowing why they dropped the requirement to have um, solar for indoor cultivation and also wanting to know what the final acreage limitation was. Thank you. Sure, I can answer that. Um, Julia Krog, Assistant Director. So the board had adopted, uh, did the first reading of the cannabis ordinance on June 2nd, and then the second reading was on June 22nd. So that just happened, you know, um, what, last week that it was uh, adopted. And what they adopted was they removed the two acre cap that the Planning Commission had recommended. So the Planning Commission had recommended that you wouldn't be able to exceed two acres or 10% of your parcel area, whichever is less. And the board did remove that in the ordinance they adopted, but then they immediately gave staff direction on June 22nd to come in and do an ordinance amendment to establish sort of a phased approach to the 10% of the parcel area. So the tentative direction had looked at, uh, you know, within the, I think it was starting with, you know, uh, 2023, looking at potentially allowing um, one acre, possibly going up to two acres, and then looking at holding public meetings to go up beyond that every couple years. 
So um, with that, there will be obviously additional hearings that will be required for the percentage of the acreage and staff will still likely come back to the board to receive additional direction to make sure that any ordinance amendment draft is in line with that. Then to address the, the renewable energy aspect, the board had discussion on June 2nd, primarily about the state requirements and the state does have requirements for having renewable energy sources that come into play in 2023 related to the cannabis regulations and they felt that they could uh, sort of default to what the state is doing in terms of the renewable energy resources rather than having a specific finding. Um, that was at least the discussion that was held during the, the board meeting. So um, I hope that provides a little bit of clarity and I'm happy to answer any other questions. And then also I, I do know that the commission has asked that staff come back to do a presentation with them on the final adopted ordinance. And I'm, I'm more than happy to do that and we'll probably schedule that. But um, you know, as you may be aware, there are is discussion in the public um, about potential referendums. So I'm a little hesitant to do that too quickly here um, in case we may see changes with regulations. So I'm happy to answer any additional questions though. Um, I, I would love to have just a quick presentation. I don't think you have to put a ton of effort into it, Julia. Um, what would be nice to know for me is, um, you know, we had a number of recommendations where they differed from our recommendations um, and why. And, and then I would also just like to make a request when you bring items forward from the Planning Commission to the Board of Supervisors. And this might just be um, sort of my history as a Community Development Director with the City of Fort Bragg when I was in your shoes, um, after I got a recommendation from um, the Planning Commission, that became the recommendation that I presented to the Board of Supervisors. I didn't divert from it. I didn't contradict it. I didn't argue against it. And um, I think that's an important precedent to set. And I feel a little bit like, um, like the staff reports to the board could include more context about why we decided what we decided rather than just what we decided because i think without that context they don't really understand the thinking process behind stuff um so i'll give you an example like you could say you know we listened to almost 20 hours of testimony and it seemed like the majority of it was against having um larger cultivation areas that was my experience of it at any rate i know it's a little bit of a sticky wicket because um, you would be interpreting what we're saying and thinking, which is hard. But I think that context can be really valuable for the legislative body to get from um, sort of the, I don't know what you call us, the judicial body maybe. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Thanks for considering. Sure. Uh, do we have any more comments or questions uh, for uh, the director, this is part of the director report. I, I have one question, quick question, Diana, which is um, also to Julia. Is there, I had heard that there was going to be, <clears throat> because there have been some modifications, that there was going to be something coming back to the Planning Commission from the Board of Supervisors for our final review on the cannabis ordinance. Is that correct, or are we done reviewing it at this point? Um, you may be actually reviewing again any sort of recommended modifications that the, the board has made to staff. Um, that's very likely. I don't have a, a timeline at this point. That's something that we'll be uh, looking through what their recommendations are and then working with council to determine what requires coming back to the planning commission for a, a report and recommendation back to the board. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any further items to request from the director's report. All right, so then we'll move on to um, agenda item number four, matters from the public. The Planning Commission welcomes participation in commission meetings. This item is limited to matters under the jurisdiction of the commission that are not on the posted agenda and items which have not already been considered by the commission. No action will be taken. Individuals wishing to address the commission under public expression are welcome to do so via telecomment or email in lieu of personal attendance. Emails shall be sent to pbscommissions at mendocinocounty.org. All correspondence received will be made available to the Planning Commission agenda page. 
to submit public comments via telecomment, a request from form must have been received by 7 a.m. the morning of the meeting. Do we have any requests for the telecomment under public expression? We do not. All right. Seeing none, um, we, the consent calendar, we have nothing on the consent calendar. And so that moves us into the agenda item 6A, our regular calendar. And the first case is UM 2019-0003-V, 2019-0005, Dharma Realm Buddhist Association. So um, I think we should open the public hearing and announce the hearing procedures. Julie, would you like to do that? Uh, sure. So um, how this will go is we'll hear from the, the uh, staff planner, then we'll hear from the applicant. Um, any questions the commissioners have of staff, then go ahead and open the public hearing and hear from members of the public and then bring it back to the commission for any questions they may have of the applicant and or staff. Okay. Um, so when called to speak, any speakers, um, at this point, uh, when you address any telecommunications that have been submitted, the clerk, the clerk will read the list in order to call the next speaker. Um, when called to speak, please state your name for the record. Public comment is limited to three minutes per person. Speakers are asked to please address their comments to the meeting chair and to refrain from using profanity or engaging in conversation with members of the audience or staff. Um, staff, any final remarks going forward? Uh, well, I think let's first hear, we'll hear from Susan Summerford this morning, who is the staff planner for this item, and I believe she has a, a bit of a presentation and take us through her report. Okay. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. <laughs> This request is a um, use permit modification and a variance uh, requested by the Dharma Realm Buddhist Association. And it involves past entitlements and has two main components. The first one is the modification of a previously approved use permit, U11-99-2009, and a variance, V7-99-2009 to modify and remove a portion of condition B1, which included a limitation that the maximum heights of the structures be limited to the height limits provided for within the applicable zoning districts. And two, a variance to Mendocino County Code chapter 20.052.055, agricultural zoning district building height limit, variance to that to increase the height of the proposed assembly hall for the IIPE from the present maximum of 50 feet high to 65 feet high. The location is at, on the campus of the city of 10,000 Buddhas, which is located 3.9 miles southeast of the city of Ukiah in the community of Talmadge, lying east of the intersection of State Route 222 and Old River Road, located at 4951 Bodie Way in Talmadge. The total acreage of the site is 288 acres and the general plan and zoning designations are both agricultural 40 acre minimum parcel. The environmental determination <clears throat> pardon me, is um, an addendum to the previously adopted EIR with the state clearing house number of 1996062086. And that was um, the EIR that was adopted as in in support of the use permit previously cited. The recommendation from staff is to approve based on the evidence and the findings and subject to the conditions and mitigation measures identified in a previously adopted EIR and codified in the existing addendum that is attached and part of this report. 
Now, I know there's a lot of background um, in the staff report, and because it is there and uh, available to be reviewed, I'm not going to go through it all. Suffice to say, there have been many things that have uh, guided us to this point, and the county and uh, the CTTB have enjoyed a long and rich history of permits and um, you know, development at their site. Here, getting down to the findings. So the, the key issues for this project um, would be the general plan and zoning consistency and the uh, variance findings that are required. And um, after staff did find and we did echo some of the findings from the previous iterations of the um, use permit and the entitlements for the IP, IIPE that it is consistent, the proposal is consistent with the agricultural zoning district um, in that educational facilities are allowable and the, the request to modify it is also guided by um, Mendocino County Code section 20.196.055, which details the procedures for modifying um, previously entitled projects. We did also find that it is in conformance with the Ukiah Valley Area Plan, although it was adopted around the time of the original um, use permit entitlement for the site. As well, the variance findings, um, there are five of them, and we do find, and this is kind of the, the hinge of it, is that there are special circumstances applicable to the property that are related to topography. And the applicant was able to very successfully demonstrate that um, I believe in attachment C of the um, maps that are part of the um, hearing packet, uh, you can see that the topo lines are there and then it also gets elucidated a bit further in this scale, um, I'm sorry, the site guidance that um, was presented by LACO which I believe are, um, yeah, they started on attachment K. And also the applicant will have a um, presentation after this uh, and that will demonstrate uh, how the topography really related to the site design of this uh, project and how they've changed it through both that and also the environmental constraints that were identified in the previous entitlement and that were housed within that um, condition B1. We also found that um, the special circumstances as required of the variance were not due to any action of the applicant. And that the variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right um, that is enjoyed by other types of uses in the same vicinity. And we have found that there will not be any uh, detriment to the public or interest to the property. And in fact, we have only received um, positive res uh, responses from the public in support of this uh, long sought project. And I really, I, I, I I feel like most of the things have been covered in here, and I just wonder if anyone has any questions about it. Do you think we should um, have the applicant's presentation first? I think uh, what I saw on the web page and my emails, um, I think that would clarify, be helpful to the commission before we open up questions. Uh, other commissioners, are you fine with that? Okay, let's have the presentation from the applicant. Okay, and I do see, so we have um, an Alan, and I'm going to totally butcher the last name, so I apologize in advance, Huang, I believe it is, um, that has their hand raised here, so I believe they are the applicant here for presentation. So, Alan, I've just brought you into the meeting here. Um, can you confirm, are you for the presentation of this item? 
Uh, hi, can you hear me? I'm actually Amy Chang Chan, and I'm using Alan's computer. Oh, that's, that's why. Okay. Hi, hi, Amy. No problem. So um, I do have your presentation available, so I can go ahead and share my screen, and then um, you can just prompt me to move to the next slide whenever you're ready. Sure, sure. Thank you for doing that. Okay. All right. Everyone should be seeing my screen at this point with the, the presentation. So Amy, when you are ready, please go ahead and begin your presentation. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Julia. Uh, good, morning, good morning, commissioners. Uh, Amy uh, Chang Chen here, representative for the applicant. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to thank the planning staff for the thorough staff report and their support uh, throughout the long development of our project. Overall, this has been a very significant and meaningful project for Dharma Round Buddhist Association. Uh, next slide, please. It is a big undertaking and indeed has taken us a number of years. Uh, the applicant remains committed to our vision of the project, which is to be a beacon of wisdom for all living beings. Uh, the good news is that we have broken ground and have built five buildings and the foundation and walls of four more buildings are going up as we speak. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, today we are here for one main request, to have one building, the main assembly hall of the project, be allowed to go up to 65 feet. And I would like to give a brief background on uh, behind the request, why it is important, how it benefits the county, and does not adversely impact the general public in any significant ways. Uh, next slide, please. In 2016, phases one and two of the project were shifted 400 feet north uh, to accommodate for uh, wetlands and to reduce the overall impact to a minimum. The map on the right shows how after the shift, wetland impact was greatly reduced. And the orange uh, areas on these maps indicate uh, wetland impact. And just in a quick update on the right, um, that actually now um, none of the orange areas exist anymore uh, because we're uh, able to use a better design uh, that further removes any impact to the wetlands. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, due to the topography of the land with the shift north, the building site of the assembly hall became lower relative to its surroundings. And the assembly hall is, is that the bigger structure towards the left of the screen. So for instance, it now sits 38 feet below Giddyville Road, the closest public road to its east. And Giddyville Road is on the right on, on the screen. Um, and it is also 15 feet lower, um, the main assembly hall site is also 15 feet lower than some of the phase one structures to its north. And this is due to the steeper topography at this part of the land. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you see the land rises in a northeastern fashion. Giddyville Road to the east rises faster than the project site as one travels north. Whereas before the move, we were building closer to road level. Now we're building at an elevation 38 feet lower than the road. We are requesting a height variance on a portion of a spiritual building of significance to compensate for the elevational change in order to restore the balance of the original vision and plan for the project. Uh, next slide, please. Not registering for me. Let me there we go. <laughs> um, from the time of the original application, it has been intended that the assembly hall be the tallest building in the development. The reason for the height is that this building is the ceremonial and spiritual center of the campus. It is important in the traditions of Buddhist and other religious architecture 
that the main hall be the highest building in order to show respect and induce a sense of grandeur and scale. Uh, this picture shows the assembly hall at 65 feet. Um, although beauty or aesthetics is in the eye of the beholder, I believe most people can imagine at 50 feet, which is the second, the lower uh, red line on the screen, um, the proportion would not be nearly as majestic or adorned. The aforementioned wetlands, topography, and the intended use of the facility are special circumstances unique to the site. Um, and as Planner Summer 4 has mentioned, having special circumstances is one of the required uh, findings for a variance. Uh, next slide, please. Well, here's a copy of the findings required to grant a variance. Uh, the applicant strongly believes conditions supporting these findings are present for the request today and would like to summarize them uh, for the commission. Uh, next slide, please. A, that there are special circumstances applicable to the property. Um, as mentioned, the natural topography and site limitations create practical difficulties to achieve applicant project objectives. Uh, building paths were relocated to preserve the natural environment, um, and there exists a 600 foot buffer zone on the east and wetlands on the south and west of the site. Uh, this is a religious based educational facility. The assembly hall presents an orientation towards the spiritual realms above. Some latitude in the permissible height is necessary to achieve this. The assembly hall is meant to inspire and unite. It should be impressive and awe-inspiring. So in summary, the topography wetlands, the scale of the campus and the intended use are the special circumstances. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, B that such special circumstances or conditions are not due to any action of the applicant. In compliance with condition B1, which I will read a portion of it here, um, condition B1 of the entitlement uh, states that emphasis in selecting the final building site shall focus on preservation and protection of wetlands significant trees and prime agricultural soils, as well as consideration of drainage related concerns and visual impacts. Um, so as I mentioned, um, in compliance with condition B1 of the entitlement, our project was shifted. After the move, the applicant faced a site-based feature, a steeper slope that presented challenges related to building height. And the circumstances due to the site characteristics of the property, not any subsequent action of the applicant. Uh, next slide, please. C, that such variance is necessary for the preservation and enjoyment of a substantial property right. As with other uh, permitted land uses in this rural zone, they are essential features that are needed for the applicant to fully use this property. Other properties do not face the same topo topographical disadvantages. And they do not have the unique features of a building site surrounded by wetlands on two sides and a 600 foot buffer zone on one side are free to construct their project at roughly the grade of the road and are not in a depression. The intent of the building's design program is to present a sacred orientation towards the heavens above. Extra height is necessary as an essential feature of this land use in order to bring about a sense of spiritual inspiration and reverence. A similar function is served by uh, church roofs and spires in Western buildings. Uh, next slide, please. 
Other religion-based structures built within the county have been similarly provided such exceptions to height, uh, such as churches and uh, temples. Such structures contribute to the religious and cultural diversity of the Mendocino County and beyond. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, D, that the granting of such variants will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the property nearby. The assembly hall site sits at 38 feet lower in elevation than the nearest public road. The current zoning height limit is 50 feet, as mentioned by Planner Summer 4. At 65 feet, the roof of the assembly hall will only rise 27 feet above Gideville Road. This cannot be construed as materially detrimental. Uh, furthermore, the structure is more than 1,000 feet away from the property line to the east, north, and south, and not visible from the road on the west side. In addition, the project includes a 600-foot landscape buffer. This buffer zone will feature berms with substantial and varied plantings, such as native evergreen trees and shrubs. All of the above contribute to views of the building not substantially visible to neighboring properties or those traversing on roads nearby. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the design of the landscape buffer has been submitted to the county in March of this year and will be installed in accordance with the already existing final findings and conditions of approval, biological resources and landscaping items uh, 23 through 27 in the uh, report. Uh, next slide, please. E, that the granting of such variants will not adversely affect the general plan. The structures were originally approved because the county has found the use and unique buildings to be consistent with the general plan. The request for additional building height for only a portion of the roof area of one building has insignificant visual impact. The final findings and conditions further provide restrictions to ensure consistency with the general plan and county environmental safeguards. Uh, the applicant is in compliance with all of these as well. Granting a variance on a portion of one building does not adversely affect the general plan. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the commissioners probably have seen the uh, visual simulation provided by LACO. Uh, they were done uh, from the two closest public roads, Giddyville Road on the east and McClure Road to the west. Um, and these visual simulations were performed with the structure at 65 feet. And we can just scroll uh, through the uh, photos. The first five viewpoints are along Giddyville Road. The structure without any of the plantings, um, again, or without any of the plantings in the buffer zone installed yet. And the structure is the yellow roof uh, in the middle of the, these photographs. Uh, pause here. Yeah, this walnut tree you see in the forefront is about uh, eight to 10 feet high. Um, 20 feet inside the property line. Certainly uh, with more plantings, the views will uh, be even uh, more shielded. Uh, next set of four pictures are uh, simulations from a clear row and none of the uh, vintage points. Uh, you can see the structure at all. Um, in conclusion, uh, we are here today 
for a variance request of 15 feet for one structure for a project that has been previously approved. We hope the Planning Commission will concur with the planning staff in determining that our request is consistent with the general plan and zoning code, satis satisfies the intent and regulations of the use permit, that all necessary various findings are present, is consistent with the Ukiah Valley Area Plan, and agrees with the finding of the staff that there are no new negative impacts not previously considered, and any impact is not materially detrimental. Uh, we thank the uh, staff at the uh, Building and Planning Department and the Planning Commission for hearing our request today. Um, Madam Chair, the applicant would like to reserve five minutes after the public comment period to address um, if any concerns that arises. And we're also available to answer any questions that the commission uh, may have. Thank you. And thank you. Um, are there some, um, going back to, that was the presentation by the applicant. Is there any more presentation by the end, part of the applicant, this group? Julia, or is that it? Uh, Amy, was there any additional folks that had signed up that you think would be wanting to provide comment as part of the applicant presentation? Uh, not at uh, this. Uh, okay, our uh, legal representative, Brian Monson, would like to request one minute to make a comment. Should he do that right now? He's he's with us in the room here. Yes. Yes, I think he's Good morning, morning commissioners. commissioners. This hopefully will be the shortest lawyer statement in my career. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that uh, another unique circumstance with this property is that I want to say about seven or eight years ago, the wetlands actually expanded, which was a natural occurrence, not caused by the applicant. And that caused the need to move the project 400 feet north. And at the old location, they could have built the assembly hall within the 50-foot uh, zoning limitation, but because of the expansion of the wetlands, it was moved into uh, this other topography where this central assembly hall would be built in, in a depression. And it also limited the building envelope to that particular area and limitations in regard to a building envelope have been held to be grounds for a variance. It's a California Court of Appeal decision called Esplanade versus City of Del Mar. Uh, with that, I will just be available to answer questions should anything come up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I think now we can um, open up public if we have any public comments, public hearings. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Uh, just in case any of us have questions for staff or the applicant, shouldn't we ask, ask those before we go to the public hearing? Um, I think in my list, it comes after that. Oh, it does? Okay, fair enough. All right, so we've got several folks that are signed up to provide comment. Um, the first on our list is Mark Davis. And uh, Mark, we're gonna go ahead and bring you over into the meeting here and allow you to speak. And it is star six to unmute your telephone. And uh, please just state your name for the record when you are ready to start talking. And after Mark Davis will be Alan Nicholson. Um, hi, hi, this is actually Stacy Carr and Mark Davis' business partner. Okay. And I would just like to say I'm um, one of the owners of Mark Davis Insurance, and we've been doing business with the Buddhists for over 40 years. Um, I really think we need to accommodate the height areas to keep them active in our community. They are very well educated. They are a pleasure to work with. 
Um, it seems like a very minor issue when you can consider all their positive contributions to our community. Uh, they provide three levels of education, elementary, high school, and university, which really does help out with the schooling of all the kids that, that just need to have some positive education. They purchase many goods and services locally, and I believe that really does help our economy out. They're an ideal neighbor in our community. They're clean, quiet, respectful, and they enhance both cultural and economic value. The new assembly hall would be a wonderful addition aesthetically and just enhance our area. I feel that and it's an important religious and spiritual center, and that's important in this day and age. Last year through COVID-19, I believe they really stepped up. They donated for masks and gloves to all our first responders. And I just urge you guys to grant this height variance. Thank you. All right, thank you. So then uh, next up, we will have Alan Nicholson. Alan, we're bringing you over into the meeting, and please unmute yourself when you're ready, and um, go ahead and, and state your name for the record, and you'll have three minutes. Good morning, Good morning commissioners. commissioners. My name is Alan, Alan Nicholson. Nicholson. Uh, uh, I'm a resident of the county, county and, and I've known the Buddhist community, community for years. Um, it is an exemplary uh, community based on uh, support of uh, uh, the larger community. And uh, this project is, uh, has been ongoing for perhaps 30 years. Um, it's been shifted around quite a bit. Uh, and the uh, application for variance is um, very minimal um, uh, and the building is a very important building for the Buddhists. It's going to be essentially uh, invisible once the plantings uh, are installed. It's already had the landscape plan approved by the County Planning Commission, Planning Department. Uh, and uh, should uh, create a, a very shielded development uh, over 600 feet from the Giddyville Road on the east. So um, with the importance of this building, the uh, uh, impacts from the uh, wetland that have shifted over the years, Apparently, it moves almost every year, um, and in, to be considerate of the wetland uh, is the reason that the project was moved to the north to uh, allow the wetland to remain a natural uh, phenomenon. So I urge you to support this project and uh, approve the variance and uh, Thank you very much for your time. That's, that's the end of my presentation. All right, thank you, Alan. So I apologize, I did not call the next speaker beforehand. So next up, we're gonna have Daniel Yan, and after Daniel will be Ron Epstein. So let me just do a little clicking around here. There we go, Daniel, you have just been brought over and unmute yourself when you're ready, and please state your name for the record. Hi, committee and all commissioners. Uh, my name is Daniel Yan. Uh, I enlisted from Ukiah back in 2018, U.S. Army. I just came back to Ukiah in 2018. I live on Gideville Road uh, with my family. And uh, one, one time, one day, my friend came over that uh, he asked me that this IIPE project around that he wants to see it. I said, you just drove past it. And he didn't notice that. All right, because that's because if you stand on the first house of the Giddy View Road and you look down to the project, you couldn't even see it because all the berms and the uh, plantation and trees around. And once in a while, I would take my kids to take a walk down the Giddy View Road and we'll stop by a certain spot to uh, that the buildings are visible. 
because we know exactly where it's at. We can only see the, the rooftop of the uh, exi existing uh, five buildings. So my conclusion for uh, today's, uh, my, my point is, uh, the, the whole project will have minimum visual impact for the surrounding neighborhood. And uh, from how far it is stand right now, uh, almost like 600 feet from Gideville Road, I think, you know, 65 feet or, six, uh, or uh, 50 feet, it doesn't really make uh, any visual uh, impact. You can't really tell the difference. So that, that's the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you, all, all the committee and commissioners. All right, thank you, Daniel. So next up, we're going to have Ron Epstein. And Ron Epstein, and I'm unsure this might be a, a repeat here. Um, I do have a Stasi on here, which I, I believe may have provided comment underneath the Mark Davis item. But we will just um, go through those and, and confirm. So Ron, when you're ready, go ahead and unmute yourself and um, state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Ron Epstein. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, I'm speaking in support of the uh, addendum to the height variance application. Uh, for the last 33 years, my wife and I have lived on uh, Mill Creek Road in Talmadge on a property adjoining the east campus of the City of 10,000 Buddhas, the uh, location of the building that we've been talking about for uh, a minor height variance. Uh, the chain, change, although minor, means the difference between a striking architectural landmark that the uh, entire Ukiah Valley community can be proud of and a much less impressive and ordinary structure without the, um, uh, the variance. Uh, the minor 15-foot change will not negatively affect uh, the neighbor's viewscape. Uh, viewscape, as uh, a number of people have uh, indicated, and that's our experience uh, uh, also in uh, walking around our neighborhood. Uh, in conversations that I've had with our neighbors on the subject, uh, the overwhelming majority of them either support the project or have uh, no objection to it. Furthermore, uh, some of the non-Buddhist neighbors have express their excitement about the project and are equal, eagerly awaiting its completion. Um, the City of 10,000 Buddhas is a well-known international spiritual center that hosts both uh, Buddhist and interfaith activities. Uh, in addition, it has a long record of uh, contributing to the greater uh, Ukiah community in many ways, including jobs, tourist dollars, investment dollars, uh, education uh, with both Dharma Realm Buddhist University and the excellent primary and secondary schools, uh, which are attended by many local children and also a lot of cultural activities and uh, including um, uh, some very impressive uh, speakers and exhibitions that have been open to the uh, local public. Uh, and as also has been mentioned at the beginning of the pandemic, the um, Dharma Ram Buddhist Association, the parent organization of the City of 10,000 Buddhas, um, uh, made major donations of uh, uh, PPE gear um, uh, when they were in short supply. And so we were one of the few places at that time in California that was not suffering uh, a severe shortage because of, uh, of that. Um, the City of 10,000 Buddhas has shown itself to be a responsible member of the community, and the county government's approval of the variance would constitute, I think, uh, a win-win situation for the neighborhood, for the county, and for the Buddhist Association. And therefore, uh, my wife and I both approve of both of the overall project and of the request for variance. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ron. And so next up, we have uh, the Stasi here. Stasi, I'm unsure if you've already provided comment, or if not, please go ahead and unmute yourself and um, begin speaking when you are ready. And announce your name for the record. Okay, not. Oh, there we go. Um, I already spoke. Thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Just making sure. All right, good. So, 
So next up, we're going to have Terry Nicholson, and Terry Nicholson will be followed by, it uh, looks like the login here is, is T. Sai. so we'll, we'll go ahead and pull a few folks over. So Terry, bringing you over into the meeting, please go ahead and unmute yourself when you're ready and state your name for the record. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, my name is Terry Nicholson. I live at 3201 Mill Creek Road, a little bit east of the project. I'd like to speak in favor of the variance. Um, I've been a neighbor of the city of 10,000 Bucas for 40 years. Um, I walk often on Giddyville Road and I have noticed, as others have mentioned, that even before the berms and other uh, buffers have been put in place, there's very little view of the project. Um, I feel like the request is a reasonable one, that it will improve the aesthetics of the project. And it is only 30% of one roof of one building that is being asked to be allowed to be slightly taller. Um, I feel like it's going to be low impact and the benefits of having the project will far outweigh any um, impacts, though the impacts seem to be low or almost non-existent. So um, I urge you to approve the project. Um, I think it will be a great benefit to our community. Thank you. All right, thank you, Terry. And so then next up, we're going to have uh, this, the T Psy, and I apologize if I'm butchering any names here, but please unmute yourself when you're ready and go ahead and state your name for the record. And after uh, this speaker will be Yen Fu Li. Oh. Hello. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I didn't see the countdown. Okay, my name is Si Cheng Cai, and I'm the architect for this project. And basically, I'm here just trying to answer any I mean, questions uh, from the commissioners or any other audience. Uh, basically, obviously, I really urge to have this 15 feet uh, height increase. And so, it will be great help me to uh, design this building in much, much better. Uh, come outcomes. Uh, so yes, while I'm here, uh, I believe all the reason uh, Amy already present uh, is really, really minimum to the uh, impact to all the neighbors and the, the vision of the, <coughs> the neighbors. Uh, but I mean, the fitting feed is real great, great help to me uh, get a, a better, much, much better building design uh, to present to the neighbors. Uh, just my presentation, thanks. All right, thank you very much. So we'll remember that we've got the architect here on the line, so that's good to know. Um, and then our last speaker for telecomment is Yan Fu Li. And Yan Fu, we just brought you over into the meeting. Go ahead and unmute yourself when you're ready. I apologize if I butchered your name at all, um, but please state your name for the record and you'll have three minutes. Okay, <clears throat> my name is Yan Fu Li. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Um, um, I prepared a little bit speech, but uh, I decided to just don't use it and say something from my heart. Like, uh, as first, uh, thank you all of you to, to have the opportunity to um, make this happen. Um, um, I moved to um, Ukiah uh, six years ago, and I live in Minnesota for 20 years, and uh, I promised to help something here, so I moved here to help the temple. And uh, the, after the COVID-19 lockdown, <clears throat> suddenly I cannot go there. And uh, at that point, I realized actually I'm not helping the temple. It's the temple helping me because I feel like uh, if I don't do this kind of um, volunteer work, I feel lost. It's 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 how I feel. And uh, then. Uh, suddenly, I remember that like, I'm fortunate enough to travel to uh, other countries, some Europe country and the uh, East Coast. And I remember, for, even I'm a Buddhist, when I see those majestic cathedral or church, I always want to get in because they make me feel so good. And when I heard about this project 
here that you're starting. I was so excited because um, uh, if you go, if you've been to the big cathedral, you know the feeling. You want that in your life, and uh, we are fortunate enough that uh, fortunate enough that uh, we have this project as our neighbor, and uh, everybody can go there to enjoy the spiritual feeling. And uh, so, in, uh, just like everybody else said, uh, the in the small amount of increase of height doesn't have um, um, impact to the neighboring. So I hope we can uh, all together make this good thing happen and uh, uh, make something good for the future generation to come. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So that concludes uh, public comment on this item. Um, and with that, then um, I'm going to open it up uh, to the commission, unless staff has anything else to present at this time, and then I'll open it up for the commission to ask uh, the staff or the public any questions. Julia, do you have any more to present? I'm just going to check in. Susan, was there anything additional you'd like to add to this item? No, there's not. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'm going to call on Commissioner Pollan. Do you have any uh, questions or comments to either public or uh, staff or applicant? Not at this time, Commissioner Weaven. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? I have two. Uh, I have kind of a funny question, and that is um, in the staff report, it said that all the facilities were um, for men, so they are men's dorms, men's restrooms, et cetera. And I'm hoping there's some place on this site for women. I'm sure there are women Buddhists who also want to um, learn and come and learn about Buddhism. So that's just kind of a weird comment, but it struck me as I was reading it. And then I also just have a recommendation um, for staff as you think through revisions to the Land Use and Development Code. Um, and that is that I think for height, changes in height, using the variance method is not the most effective and i'd like to encourage you guys to think about instead asking people to get a major or a minor use permit for changes of height and writing that into the code because it's hard to prove for changes in height that topography has an influence whereas i think a use permit process would give the commission the opportunity to um, provide a uh, changes from the ordinance, but at the same time, make it a cleaner and easier process. So that's just a recommendation for when you redo um, our zoning ordinance for us. Um, so it's not really relevant to this project, but those are my comments. Thank you. Um, and uh, Chair Wiedemann, I have a couple uh, comments and, and questions. And this is a question for the architect, since we have our, uh, uh, we have the opportunity to talk to, to the architect. On the ridge line, how long is that ridge line at the very top of the building? Okay, the, the ridge line, the top of the roof, we're talking about roughly like 120 feet, um, a little shorter than that, because it's sloped a four pitch roof. Right, so it's about 120 feet. It, that's just something I wanted to understand. And then this is for the applicant. Um, the other buildings that have been approved, what is their, what's the tallest building that's been approved to date of the other buildings? Um, who is it? Hi. This Sue? Is, yeah. Hi, this is Amy Chan Chen. It took a while to unmute ourselves. Um, the uh, buildings that's been approved, there are two structures at 40 feet. All right. And are there any one buildings that might be coming up in the future that is going to surpass a 50 foot height limit? Or do you, are you um, able to say they're all going to be 50 feet or under? Uh, they're all going to be uh, 50 feet or under. Okay, thank you very much. If, and if I may make a clarification on uh, Commissioner, was it Commissioner Jones' comment? Um, on the men's facilities, 
uh, with the way the uh, project is designed, the square footages are actually uh, equally uh, allocated between men's and women's facilities. Uh, it, it may be the case that came out of the report. So because of our phase one structures are men's facilities. Um, and then this assembly hall and public area is our phase two. Um, and then the women's facilities is either gonna be built at the same time as phase two or follows um, the second phase. So hopefully that provides a little bit of a clarification. <laughs> Thank you. You're good, Commissioner Jones? You, okay. Okay. Uh, are there any further questions at this time from any of the commissioners? Nope. Okay. With that, I'm, I'm closing uh, the public hearing. And now we are, the matter is be, before the commission. And I'm going to ask one last time any other comments from the commissioner questions. If not, let me, if not, raise your hand. Okay. Um, with that, do I have a motion? Sure, I'd like to move that we approve. Um, okay, based upon the evidence and findings and subject to the conditions and mitigation measures identified in the previously adopted EIR, the project applicant request for a modification um, through a variance, variance number 7 99 and a modification to uh, existing condition on building height. I'll second that motion. All right. Um, and the uh, before we uh, vote on that i just want to ask because the international institute for philosophy and ethics the addendum are you reading from the addendum marie jones uh no i was actually reading from the cover page if you want i can i can read the resolution title instead if you prefer um and right if i may uh Commissioner Jones, there is a recommended action on page 12 of the staff report right above the staff signature. And before before you read that, Commissioner Jones, uh, Julia, um, there's how on the um, addendum to the previous adopted EIR, right? How do we if there, if there's a couple of words in there that need, I think, need to be changed. When do we do that? Uh, I would recommend that you make that part of your motion, so that way it's clear on the record. Okay. Um, in this case, Diana, it might be easier. Yeah. I'll just withdraw my motion, and it might be easier for you to make the motion with the changes rather than us to go back and forth. Um, I think you should continue with the motion, uh, Commissioner Jones. All I want to say is there's two times where it refers to the tower, and it should refer to, I believe, the building. Thank you. We can make sure that that's noted in the, the record for the meeting here. Right. Okay. All right. With that, I will reword my motion to um, respond properly to what's on page 12, which is. Um, I move that we adopt by resolution and the addendum to the EIR SCH 199606286 and grant the use permit modifications and variants for the project as proposed by the applicant based on the facts and findings and subject to the conditions of approval and existing mitigation monitoring and reporting program. Does that suit you, Julia? That's perfect. <laughs> All right, yay. Well, Dep Deputy County Council Matthew Gadrowski, I'll add to that, that needs to include a reference to the changes uh, of the word tower to building. Uh, but, but. Thank you, Matthew. I forgot that. <laughs> Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. All right. Can I have a roll call vote, please? Yes, you can. Commissioner Holland. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Wiedemann. Yes. Motion passes 3-0 with 
Commissioner Morris on Parnell, um, absent by arrangement. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for a lovely presentation. And uh, thank you for being good community members. And should we take a five minute break uh, before we open the next uh, agenda item? Or the, is that good for the- would like to do. Yeah, we're staff, we're good to- Yeah, continue. let's take a five minute break and we'll come back in five minutes. Great. Thank you. With amendments as to
बोला agenda item uh, number 6B of the regular calendar, and that's case MS 2019-0001, Gary and Virginia Island. And um, may we have uh, the, uh, I guess what I would do is let's have, let's open it up to, uh, we can have the public hearing first, or we can have the report from staff. What would you two prefer? Deputy County Council Matthew Gadrowski, I'd recommend that we have the staff presentation. If the uh, applicant is, is present, we can hear them, followed by questions from the commission to staff, and then the public okay. hearing will be open. Yeah. All right. So let's hear let's hear the uh, staff presentation. Hey, good morning, Commissioners. Dirk Larson, Planner with uh, Mendocino County Planning and Building. Uh, the project before you this morning is a proposal to divide an existing 325 acre parcel uh, into two parcels, 160, 165 acres each. Uh, the property is located on the south side of Highway 253, about uh, seven miles east of Boonville. Um, the property has two existing developed sites, uh, one having a single family dwelling, the other a manufactured home. Each site has its own septic and water system and utilities. Um, the project was referred out to the responsible agencies. We received no comment from the majority. Uh, Cal Fire did recommend condition of approval related to the state fire safe regulations, but the property is already adhering to those standards. Uh, environmental health did raise a concern about the um, kind of identified location of the septic system for, I believe, parcel one, which contains or will would contain the manufactured pump and the location of said septic. I think the agent applicant um, satisfied the age's requirement there, and that was resolved. DOT only recommended uh, to make sure that they are getting their encroachment permits, but as stated, both already have their own developed paved driveways to each site. Um, we did put this, this did go before the Archaeological Commission. Uh, there was an archaeological survey done back in the early 90s associated with a previous minor subdivision involving this property. Uh, the survey found no cultural resources and the commission uh, did request a condition be added. Uh, and I think I'll, I'll kind of save that for Julie at the end. I think we have a, a few things to go over there. Um, the project itself is consistent with the general plan and rangeland zoning designation. Uh, the request is to create two parcels that meet the minimum threshold of 160 acres. This property was under a Williams Act contract, but has been non-renewed and went through that 10-year non-renewal period and I believe terminate, uh, terminated as of January this year. Um, but regardless of being out of the wing snack, the size of the parcels being proposed would preserve the agricultural uh, aspects and open space aspects uh, for the, the property itself in the immediate area. Um, we did, the initial study was performed and um, completed in accordance with CEQA, and we found uh, no significant impacts to the environment and a negative declaration was prepared. Um, the project went before the subdivision committee and uh, the committee recommended conditions of approval and there was no conflicts discovered or uh, brought out uh, against the county division of land, uh, land uh, regulations and that about sums up. That's about it. Thank you, Dirk. And I'm just going to add on, as, as Dirk had alerted, uh, alluded to as well, that um, with the cultural resources section of the resolution, there is condition of approval number six, which had been recommended by the Archaeological Commission, which stated that prior to any future ground disturbance, the applicant shall submit the 1994 Archaeological Survey by Jay Flaherty to the Archaeological Commission for review. 
And after publication of the staff report, when really thinking about the implementation of this measure, um, staff was having trouble being able to see how this would be able to be sort of implemented in the future and what type of improvements may be subject to this. So in looking at the other conditions, I, what really the commission, I believe, was trying to get after was to ensure that no archaeological resources will be impacted. So first off, staff did look back at that 1994 archaeological survey and saw that no resources were identified in that archaeological survey. So there is nothing noted as being present on the property. And then secondarily, condition five in the resolution does have the discovery clause, which would be applicable at any point. So at this time, staff is recommending that condition six be struck from the resolution and just maintain condition five. And that would result in renumbering of the remainder of the conditions after condition six. Mm -hmm. And that concludes staff's presentation and we are more than happy to answer any questions. Um, and I think maybe what we should do is if we want to hear from the, uh, the uh, applicant first, then we can open up questions. Is that sure. comfortable? Sure. And I'll just let you know um, to the commission, both the applicant and the agent for the project are, are not available on the line today. However, they did reach out to staff in advance of the meeting and let us know they have no concerns or see no conflicts with the recommendations by staff and the conditions of approval. All right. With that, then I'm going to call on the commission, my fellow commissioners for um, questions or comments. Uh, Commissioner Jones. None. Commissioner Paul. None at this time, Commissioner Wiedemann. None. And uh, Commissioner Wiedemann, I am fine uh, with it. I was just kind of interested that the uh, dirt, maybe um, you could explain the Williamson Act that they had a 10 year and they're in the last year of it. And can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Just Absolutely. Uh, Williamson Act contracts, um, you, you know, as an agreement between the county and a property owner. You right. Know, they exchange for a tax break, they use their property for ag purposes primarily. In this case, um, I think the owner requests to be removed. There's two options. The county can request a non-renewal and the owner. Um, and in this case, I think it was the owner, or uh, it could have been for lack of an ag use. Um, and, and in that case, the county can take grounds to non renew the contract. Um, it really has minimal impact other than to the property taxes for the owner. Um, again, this project is proposing to preserve size parcels that would benefit the surrounding area and any future agricultural use of the property. So, so with that, I just had a question. If a property is in Williamson Act, are they are they uh, capable to do subdivisions within while they are? Okay, that was the yeah, uh, yeah, policies and procedures indicates there are minimum parcel size allowed in the Williams Act contract: ten acres for a prime and forty acres for non-prime. This is non-prime, um, and it definitely meets that minimum threshold. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any further questions from the commission? If not, uh, can I entertain a motion? Oh, and uh, if I may, uh, Chair Wiedemann, oh, yeah. we just need to uh, call for the, the public hearing and potential public comment. I thought we did. Okay. Is there any public comment? And there is no public comment for this item. <laughs> okay. I thought we had crossed that bridge. So, with seeing that there's no public comment, and uh, staff has given their presentation and there's no further co uh, planning commissioners questions or um, input. Can I entertain a motion? I'd like to make a motion that by resolution that we adopt a negative declaration and grant a minor subdivision MS-2019-0001 as proposed by the applicant based on the facts and findings and subject to the conditions of approval. With the modification to strike, so you want to add that? Number six. Right. <laughs> right. With the modification as proposed. Thank you. I'll second that motion. All right. Uh, could I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Pollan? Yes. Commissioner Wiedemann? Yes. Motion passed. Motion 
Motion passes three to zero with Commissioner Morris and Purnell um, absent by prearrangement. Great. Well, thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Larson, you did a great staff report. Thank you, Commissioners. Have a great day. You too. With that, then we move on uh, to our moving right along this agenda, which is wonderful. Matters from staff? We have no matters from staff. However, I do just want to update the commission that we, we do have the list of various items that the commission has asked for trainings on. And I, I know it's been a little bit of time, but it just it takes a while for us to coordinate amongst other departments as well, like especially on the water training. So we're hoping to get that agendized in the very near future here, but it just has not yet come together to work for a particular date yet. So I want to let you know, though, that your your comments and requests are not going unheard, and we are working on it, addressing those. All right, thank you. Matters from Commission? Yes, Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I was wondering, um, I'm sure you guys have a running list of all of the projects that you're working on right now. And I was wondering if at our next meeting, um, you could just share that list with us so we just have a sense of what's coming and when it might be coming. Sure, are you thinking primarily items that fall underneath the jurisdiction of the commission, my assumption is? That's exactly what I'm thinking of. Okay. Use permit, coastal development permit, any land use plan updates, um, the second unit um, for the coast, for example. I just know there's a lot of things out there that um, the Oak, Woodlands resolution or ordinance. There's a lot of things out there that I just don't really know the status of, and it would be nice to have that information so that when I get asked from the public, I have an answer. <laughs> Absolutely, we can put something together to share with the the commissioners for an upcoming meeting here. That's no problem. Now I won't have perfectly uh, what hearing right. dates some things are set for, but I can at least have the general status of where that project is at. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Or even just the name of the project and, you know, what it is. I don't even necessarily need to know that it might come in a year or half a year or whatever, but just to, so that we have a sense of kind of what the volume is and what's coming down. And then also, particularly on the legislative, legislative side, so that we can start being informed and whatnot. And Absolutely. That sounds that'd great. Awesome. No problem. Thank you. Um, just on that same note, I just want to add uh, to staff. You know, even if you group it as season, seasonal for us, it would be very helpful. Like, hey, you know, the next three months, this is what we're looking at the following. Just in general, even if we don't meet, even if all those things change because it's because it's changeable, we, we understand that would be helpful to us. Right. Just in that. Um, and before I pass to Commissioner Pollan, I just want to ask, did we ever get the, when we got the Google, we got the access to look at, uh, work with the, the Google app to look um, in detail. Did we ever get the uh, instructions on actually how to function that to streamline uh, the user work you mean, on that? You mean for the GIS I, system? Yes. Yes, I did send out the tutorial on how to utilize that system, but I can resend it. If you don't have it in your email, let me know and I'll resend it to you. Would you just resend it to me and be a lot faster in that yeah. sense? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Paul. Can you resend it to everybody if you don't mind? Absolutely. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Uh, nothing for me right now. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, since there's uh, no other matters from the commission, can I have approval of minutes? Uh, we have no minutes on the agenda today. That's what I thought. All right. Seeing none and seeing we completed our agenda, I'm going to uh, ask for adjournment. All second. Is, are you uh, making a motion to adjourn? No, I was second, seconding yours. I thought you just made a motion. Okay, I'll make the motion. I'm chair, so it's a little harder, but I'll, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second by uh, Commissioner Jones. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day Thank and you. have a happy 4th of July. You too. Hey, yeah, you too. Everybody have a good time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.